St. James. I'm here today on the Howard Stern Show to promote my book, Bunny Tales, Behind Closed Doors at the Playboy Mansion. Um, so the book just came out yesterday, so I want to talk to Howard about it, and I'm sure he's going to ask me loads of questions about Hef, and I'm sure my sex life at the mansion as well. So we'll see how that goes. So you're willing to reveal a lot today? I'm willing to reveal a lot, but, you know, I will draw the line somewhere. We'll see. We'll see what Howard can get out of me. Let me tell you about Isabella St. James right now. Her book, Bunny Tales, is available in stores now. I am endlessly fascinated, and I hope you are as well, by the women who have sex with you, Hefner. She was one of the seven. Remember when he had seven different girlfriends all at once? Yes. And let me take a look at her, because she's certainly not hard on the eyes. Look at you, honey. <laughs> and what Hello a bot there. on you. Don't be insulted by this, Isabella, but wouldn't you say that the women who are with Hef are prostitutes, including yourself, only in that you receive money for having sex, you get an allowance, you get um, your, your clothing paid for, he has to, you have to answer to him, but in, and, and also you, ha you are expected to have sex with Hef on his terms, but you will be compensated for it. Isn't it prostitution in Isn't a sense? Isn't that what, you know, many, many girlfriends of powerful men, aren't they married? I mean, they're they're paid for in terms of all their is lifestyle. It, I'm is asking Isabella, it, but Thank is you. it prostitution? And I, I'm, I'm being serious. No, it's absolutely not. Um, Explain to me, because I don't understand the difference. Well, it's not like, you know you have sex with half and then he takes out a thousand dollars and give you the allowance i understand I mean, he pays you in a paycheck and he does it once a week but uh, nevertheless it is a payment for sex you would not would you have sex with half for free there some sort of relationship you're with him a lot more than yes. just for sex would you have of had course. would you would have sex with half if he wasn't paying you yes wrong I mean, no um wh the first yeah. time i had sex with half was before i moved into the mansion before i was receiving any allowance but in your in your book you mm -hmm. even state that you were looking to get into this arrangement you you liked it right i mean it was half was not someone who turned you on physically you say i said that eventually you know at first i was very intrigued by him i was attracted to him i mean it's hugh hefner you know social well you said you and... were in, impressed by his business acumen but you were not uh, impressed with him physically i mean the man was 80 years old yeah he was 76 when i met right. him but you know when you meet hev you really don't see the age he's just like he's just very young at heart and he's very charming and are there other 76 and... year olds that you've had sex with other than hef no, I no, never of course had. not. But he is Hugh Hefner. That's who he is, Howard. Yes, but when yes. you're paid by Hugh Hefner, and by the way, there are pictures of Isabella on the front page of our website right now. She's a beautiful girl. There's no question. I mean, you're being very hard on her. Am I being hard on yes, Isabella? Yes, uh, to to say, uh, are you a prostitute? Is it prostitution? Simply because she had a generous boyfriend. Thank you, Robin. That's exactly my take on it. You know, there's so many wives in Hollywood or uh, wife of wives of political figures who receive generous gifts, and uh, before they marry them, I mean. What, do you have to marry the person at the end in order not to be a prostitute? I well, mean, they're prostitutes too, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Isabella. <laughs> Isabella, you wrote a book. Is Hef happy that you wrote a book about his sex and his sex life? You know, I, I don't really know how he feels about the book quite yet. I spoke with him a few months ago, and he said he would give me the blessing for the book if I wrote only wonderful and great things about him. Did you write only wonderful and great no. things? I don't think so. I don't think so, but, you know, I wrote the truth, and the truth isn't wonderful and perfect, and that was the whole point of writing a story like Didn't that. the half make you sign an agreement when you uh, got into this that you wouldn't write about him? No kind of, uh, no. Uh, no, nothing, never. Nothing, no confidential agreement nothing no confidentiality no nothing no. <laughs> Boy, that's silly. Well, that would prove to you that it's not just a business, because if it was, there'd be all kinds of contracts. Take me back to this. So you met Hef, beautiful woman. Where are you from? I was born in Poland, and I grew up in Canada. Okay. And you meet Hef at a club where? In Los Angeles? In L.A. at Sunset Club. Were you one of these girls who goes to L.A. trying to get some kind of career started? Or? No. I, was, um, I went to McGill University, Montreal, Canada, and then I went to law school in Malibu, Pepperdine. So University. you're a lawyer. Yeah, I, I met Hef when I was in law school, the first time I met him, and I was invited to parties, so I would go to all the parties, and about a year after I initially met him... Now, most guys would not even believe that uh, Playboy Playmate could be a lawyer as well. Is that true? It's the stereotype, the blonde right. bimbo. Of course. You are a lawyer. Yeah. 
Have you passed the bar exam? I have not taken the bar because um, obviously I lived at the mansion and then I started writing the book, so right. I haven't had the time yet. Did, did you finish law school? Yes, I did. Um, and that's when I started dating Hef. When I graduated from law school, I graduated a semester early because I studied abroad and... I, I know that McGill has the reputation of being the Harvard of Canada, so yes. you're no you're no dummy. <laughs> and Pepperdine's a good no school, dummy. too. Yeah, That's now, a very attractive package. Now, Hav uh, did make a quote about the book, Howard, and he said, he d did Hav pay for your law school? No, you know, he did, he said that, and it was um, on page six that I, I put her through law school and I wish her well. Hav did not contribute a, a dime to my law school education. My parents, who are, you know, immigrants in Canada, worked very, very hard, and I have huge school loans. So I don't know why he's taking yeah, the credit he, he for said, He said he paid for a law school, and he said that it's sad that she's not using it. And basically his quote was, some girls get a life and some girls write a book. Oh, right. so he's angry. So I have no life, and I wrote the book, right? So he's <laughs> angry. So he is angry. Right, I think so. Right. Were your parents upset? You hear you had gone to law school. You had gone to the Harvard of Canada, and now you're banging half, and you're naked in a magazine. <laughs> what? I never post for the magazine, Howard. No kidding. No, I never have. Not on the internet, not in the magazine, nothing. On your website, there's no nude pictures there's of you. There's absolutely no nude pictures of you. And you but will never do nude? They don't exist. <laughs> wow. And you won't but do nude? But your parents... I won't. No. They must have been... This was a wrong turn, wasn't it, for them? They <laughs> didn't see this happening. Well, you know, Robin, it was kind of like... I, I graduated law school a little bit early. I have a few months to spare before I have to take the bar. Why don't I try something new? And I also worked as an intern, um, a legal associate at Playboy. Yeah, but I'm thinking my mom is saying my daughter is with that crusty old guy. But I didn't really tell my parents that I was dating Hev. I uh. said, you know, I'm working for Playboy at the legal department, and he's very nice. And I should fuck an 80-year-old. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I bet there's an old cow somewhere who will give me tons of money Absolutely. if I fuck her. Absolutely. There's got to be somebody. Leona Helmsley is looking. Where is she? Where is she? I hear she has Alzheimer's. She'd be perfect for me. I'll tell her I'm Harry. I came back from the dead. I'm banging that old coot. <laughs> Let me ask you, Isabel. Let's get to the good part. You meet half. You become into this arrangement. You were one of seven, let's call, girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And you were not... I, I, I've heard from other girls. There's one special girlfriend. Is that correct? Well, there... It, there's one main girlfriend, yeah. It's right. the, the girl who shares his bedroom with him and who sleeps in his bed every night. All right. You didn't sleep. You weren't the main girlfriend. You didn't no. sleep in the bed every night. No. Does the main girlfriend get more money or less money? Um, at the time I lived there, she got the same amount of money as everybody else. Same amount of money. All right. Mm -hmm. So you move into the Playboy Mansion, and you enter into this financial arrangement with Hef. And the, 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 the stunning part is the sex. Wait. Let me ask one thing about the, the money. Is it stated you're going to get this much? No, Robin, you don't know what oh, you're okay. going to get. So it know. just winds up being a certain amount. It's just, it's just, he well, doesn't pay for our clothes. He just gives us an allowance to buy clothes for going out and to pay our, you know, for gas and whatever. Mm -hmm. Money that we need because he doesn't want any of the girls to work. Let me, let me get into the money, and I'm going to get into it uh, very, very uh, directly and explicitly. But first, let me get into the sex. You, you write that Hef only has sex two nights a week with all the girls. Right. Okay. And uh, that would be Wednesday and Friday night. Any reason why it's Wednesday and Friday? Yeah, those were the two nights we went out to clubs. I see. And so what, does he get aroused at the club? Is, what, why, why the nights you go out to clubs? Probably because everybody gets drunk. Right. So it's a <laughs> Honestly, lot. Honestly, and goes back home, and it's easy to set it up that way. It's think. easier to have sex that way. I mean, there was never sex, you know, like, oh, come to the room and let's all have sex, or he would never come to our own rooms individually. Um, it was just those two times a week, and if we went out once a week, then it was once a week. And the hefster is able to get it up uh, without uh, Viagra or anything? Well, no, he takes his Viagra at a specific time at the club. Well, you're saying now you're out at the club, and Hef takes Viagra. He takes it at the club. What time does he take it? Uh, gosh, I don't know, around midnight. Midnight. And, and so he, then we have to leave at like 12.30 sharp. <laughs> <laughs> because Viagra takes a certain amount of time to kick in. As so. soon as he takes that pill a half hour later, you're in the car. Yeah, and if we're dilly-dolling, he would get mad. He'd be like, come on, girls. <laughs> and he would say, girls, we got to go. I took my Viagra. Yeah, he would like push us out of there. All right, and you were probably having a good time. Now, and, and we wanted to stay because that's when everybody arrived, you know? When we're leaving, everybody... And, and you're not allowed to flirt with other men in front of half, right? Oh, what no. happens if you flirt? There's a, there's a whole thing. Well, you're not allowed to flirt. I mean, even if celebrities come and say hi to half and stop for a second to speak with any of the girls, he gets really upset and looks at his security and has them escorted out. Ooh. Does he get jealous Makes is what you're sad. saying? He gets very jealous. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I was at the Playboy Mansion, we did a radio show from there. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful young girl did come up to me and slip me a note and said, listen, yeah. 
I'm not allowed to talk to anyone. Can you can you can you call my <laughs> cell phone number and take me out with you? Really? Yes. She was. She yeah. seemed afraid. She said she, if she got caught, they they would yell at her or something, or well, they lock her in a room. Is there any truth to this? No, I mean they wouldn't. But you know, help would come to you and, and say that was inappropriate. You know, I'm her boyfriend. Because initially, what happened, I think, with the previous girlfriends is some of them had affairs with celebrities which would then be in tabloids and you know it made them look bad it made it embarrassed half and and, and and ruined the illusion that half has this all that, encompassing yeah. power over women i mean i hear now that some of his girlfriends were on the show or one of them is driving around with some guy and you know the car that he bought her and and one of them is married i mean and, so, and she yeah. still has sex with half too yeah wow Wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> well, now her husband feels around that. So around midnight, you describe you have to leave a club, and you all look, I mean, I'm looking at the dress you're wearing today. It's like a leopard print, and you got the big boobs, and you look great with the blonde hair. So this has got to be exciting for the hefster. He gets you all in the limousine, takes all seven of you back, right. and the Viagra is just kicking in. And then what happens? He, he, on the limo ride home, does, does, he, does any sex occur? No, um, I, the first couple of times I went out with Hef before, months before I became a girlfriend, um, one of the girls that was there before would, you know, give him oral sex sometimes, but... In the car in front of you? In, in front of everybody, even, you know, and it's ow, never just ow, seven ow, girls. Ow, ow, ow. Was that gross? <laughs> It was just kind of, you know, I mean, I was still in law school. I didn't think I could date him. I just went out with him a couple of times out of curiosity and because I was intrigued. And so, of course, it was shocking for me. <laughs> Is it weird that, like, when, when girls are so fawning over the guy, I guess psychologically at some point you go, well, maybe I should fawn over him too. Right, and it wasn't seven girlfriends at the time. At the time, he had two girlfriends, and there were about 15 women or 20 who wanted to be his girlfriend. So we would go out with, like, 15 girls. Right, so you're actually competing to really become the they girlfriend. Were competing. I was, you know, I was kind of just checking out the scene and seeing how I feel about it all. I, I hadn't decided anything, but the other girls are very competitive. Oh, yeah. So when you're, so when you're, when you're, when you're watching a man, uh, like, half get a, 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 a oral sex from a woman in a limo, it's a strange scene because th you say not only are the girls just around, but just anyone who's there. It, it just happens. Oh, yeah. There, there were girls who were coming um, to, you know, uh, test for the magazine, and they would right. sit there, and they were very young girls from the Midwest, and they were just almost in tears because they felt so uncomfortable oh really yeah so but you know it only happened a couple of times and then it stopped i think because they reali have realized and maybe the other girlfriends when i became a girlfriend our group wasn't like that so we didn't right we didn't do that so when you got to the mo you got to the bedroom for mm -hmm. the big sex night when's let's say it's wednesday night mm -hmm. you get in there and by the way the book is called bunny tales it is available in stores now and i imagine this will be a big seller because people are interested in the the sex lives of especially you have right? <laughs> yeah. so he'd have a porn movie going we've heard this from the other girls too mm -hmm. a porn movie but some people said it was gay porn no howard there was never even gay porn no gay i porn. mean maybe that happens once or twice in the 70s or something I, I don't know i'm just guessing that's maybe how the rumors started but no during the time i was there which is over two years there was never any gay porn on did he have you tested before he would uh, have sex with you no no so so and he's not testing. so you're taking a chance as well as he's taking a chance yeah aren't you all taking a chance in other words stds i mean if any of the girls have an std or have has one i mean you're all going to share it together well it's supposed to be a very open and free relationship if somebody gets sick or has something they're supposed to disclose it to everybody and not right. participate in sex right you know, and that's how and that's works. how it goes but did well, anybody ever step up and say i've got something um, yeah, once. Really? Really? Yeah. One, what did the girl say? Um, somebody had, um, I think it was chlamydia or something. Oh, oh yeah. my God, that'll hurt. And then, <laughs> and then have secretary called in to the drugstore and had a prescription of medication sent to every single girl. And, you know, I hadn't had sex with half at that point for months. It was at the end of my stay there. And, um... I was like, I don't need this, but thank you. Right. So you, so it's weird, though. I mean, I'm worried. Like, don't you now? When you look back on it, do you realize you were risking your life in a sense? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. But you know, I, I was very careful about my contact with Hef. If I ever had sex with him, it was I was always the first one to. Yes. Um, so I would never ever have sex with Hef after he had sex with somebody else. I see. Would he give you oral at all? Um, he gave oral to some of the girls. Yeah, sometimes, not you. But it was very rare. Um, I don't recall that I ever was on the receiving end now. Uh, the girls would start to give you oral, perhaps? Uh, there were girls who tried, you know, and I did have a couple experiences with the girls. What'd you um, think? It was nice. <laughs> you liked it? 
Well, I mean, I had, you know, a beautiful woman who was Playmate of the Year at the time trying to, you know, kiss on my neck and it was a very sensual experience, so I kind of... Went with it? And you're, you know, you're at the Playboy Mansion and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I guess if I'm ever going to do this, this is the time and the place to do it. What a guy's dream. I mean, half is living the dream. I mean... But wait a minute. He never... Wouldn't you... You... you as a man, your ego says you need to satisfy a woman, right? You want to see... Right. That a woman is satisfied? Uh, half doesn't seem to care. No, he doesn't seem to ask or inquire, you know. Was uh, that good for you? <laughs> see, it doesn't sound like you enjoyed the sexual experience with the hamster. That's why I say, in a way, it's like prostitution, because mm -hmm. the sex sucks. It's nothing you were interested in, but you stayed in it for the money. No, Howard didn't stay in it for the money. I just, I developed relationships with these girls. I was very close with them, and it was kind of like a... We were feeding Family. off each other. You can't leave, and we're going to miss you. You can't leave without us. We'll all leave together at some point. And so, you know, I wasn't really sexually involved with Hava at that point anyway. Right. So. You had so much going on, too. I mean, you could have gone and been a lawyer. I mean, uh, certainly successful on your own, but there was something drawing in. It's almost like a cult. It is. It's it's like initially it's all very fascinating. Everything that happens in Hev's bedroom is just intriguing and fascinating. And right. like, wow, I'm living out this wild life. And then you realize that it's kind of just the facade and... So what's your pay for the year? What, let's get into the uh, financial. Yeah, what do you make? What do you make annually doing this guy? Come on, let's hear yeah. this. I gotta know. <laughs> what is the pay? In other words, you're a half girlfriend. What, what, that job description, if I saw it in the paper, what would the salary be? Well, um, so you get a thousand dollars a week for your allowance, it's cash. A thousand a week, so that works out to about a hundred thousand a year. What? A thousand oh. a week is fifty two thousand no. a year. No, I'm saying you don't have to pay taxes. taxes. It's a thousand dollars cash, so it's a hundred thousand dollars a year. Think about it. If you had to pay taxes on a hundred thousand bucks yeah, a year, yeah, but what they're getting is fifty two thousand. Right. Yeah, but I'm saying that's tax free. But so, then they get other money. What else do you get? Well, you have, um, you know, you go and choose a car that you want. He puts ten thousand nice. dollars down on it, and then he pays for it and the insurance on it while you wow. live there. That's a decent wage. Not um, bad. Anytime we, we went to the Grammys or Emmys or any um, parties like that, he would give us two thousand dollars for an outfit. Mm -hmm. Wow. And to wear and two G's for the outfit for the Grammys. And isn't there a clothing allowance in general? You can't be running around in rags. Yeah, you got to look hot. Right, and at the end of my stay there, he stopped doing it, which was odd. He stopped really? doing what, paying? Giving us clothing allowance for events, you know. I would go to the Grammys. Of course, we want to look good. We're going to be on the red carpet, and he just all, stopped All the doing girls, it. or just you? Was he trying to ace you out? No, he, all the girls. All the girls. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, and then there's money for... Uh, medical and dental, right? <laughs> yeah, everything is taken care of. Medical and dental. He really? That's everything. great. Yeah, girls get a hair and makeup allowance, so they um, look good. No, he just has an account at um, a Beverly Hills salon that we go right, to. Right, so you can go. He pays for it. All plastic surgeries. He got you a nose job and um, boobs, right? Yeah, I had my nose shortened a little bit, yeah. um, but not a major surgery. And he does pay for the breast implants, yeah. Does he require breast implants? No, he doesn't. But it seems like, you know, when you live there and everybody has them, it just seems like a normal part of life. You like got great thing. tits, I'll tell you that if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> well, thank you. It looks like a good job. Who's the doctor? He did a good job over thank there. Thank you. Um, Dr. Fisher? Dr. Fisher. He's the big guy out there, yeah, right? Yeah, he was married to Brooke Burke. Right, right, right. Dr. Good Tits. Yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> did a nice job on you. Thank you. Um, so, so, in other words, I guess it's a good deal. You think about it. It would compute out to about $105,000 a year, using my theory of the, the ta taxes and all that. I don't, nobody cares about the taxes. I, I always look at things like that. You know what I mean? It works out pretty good. It's not like you got to work a lot. You can hang out a lot. You said right. your room, though, wasn't great at the Playboy Mansion. No, it was surprisingly shabby. And just, you know, every single piece of furniture was just it's run down. match and really run down and not taken care of. And Older people don't put much money into their right, homes. Right, they stop for some reason or other. Well, you know, like I, I said in the book, um, Half doesn't own the Playboy Mansion. It's owned by the company. So I think there's, you know, they don't want to spend the money. Oh, is that on what it is? Oh, you're yeah. kidding. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it has to be approved. Any time that we wanted to replace the carpet or something was like this big fiasco. Let's go to Corey. Corey in wow. Chicago. You're on the air. You're on with Isabella St. James. Her book is Bunny Tales. It's available in stores now. It's an inside look at what goes on at the Playboy Mansion. And you know what? They run a tight ship there. you got to be in by 9 o'clock, right? You're not allowed to go out because he's right. afraid you're going to go out and fuck some other guys, right? <laughs> uh, you're not allowed to speak to other men. And also, um, uh, you have to have all your phone calls screened, right? Oh, really? I don't 
think so. I mean, you know, I just use my cell phone. No one really mm. called the, the mansion. No, I thought you were all screened and stuff, and the guards watch over what phone calls and stuff. The you guards. Made. There's guards, right, that guard you. <laughs> yes, we do have guards, certainly. <laughs> yeah, and what, what's that about? I mean, so nobody trusts you, really. They want you no. locked up. I mean, up. even if you're going to the bathroom at a club or anywhere, they, you get escorted, and uh, they're supposed to report, I think, if you're talking to guys or doing anything like that. Too. You never banged any celebrities when you were at the uh, Playboy Mansion? No, I didn't. I just, you know, I thought the situation was was already involved enough. I didn't want to complicate my life. What about now? You got a boyfriend? Um, I married. Oh, you married? To a guy that I write about in the book. Yes, Justin, who was my Howard, husband. can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Real quick, Corey. All right. Uh, how, by the way, I love you. Love your show. Thanks. Marty, love you. Uh, Isabella, I want to just backtrack for a second. Uh, when you used to bang Howard, or uh, Howard, <laughs> you used to bang Hess, did he ever do like facials and stuff like that, or was he more or less? Would he ever blow a load on your face? Mm, no. God. Did Hef ever ask you to do anything sexually that you refused to do? No. You always were open to it. Did you ever do anal no. with a hefster? No. I no. mean, it's not that I wasn't open to it. It's that he never asked me to do anything, and which is good because I wouldn't. You know, I understand why Hef is upset by this. Oh. I mean, if I was... It sounds it terrible. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't sound good for him, but at the no. same point, from a guy's point of view, it sounds great. I mean, first of all, if you're 79 years old and you're able to still, either through Viagra or other means, maintain seven women, mm -hmm. uh, get laid twice a week by all seven women, from a guy's stand up, you know, from a guy's point of view, I know, like, wow. What an awesome feat. I mean, really, in a sense, I mean, it is amazing to me. Uh huh. Uh, it is also but very it's a sad. a lot of illusion, you know, because mm. he's not really satisfying anybody. Yeah, and he doesn't. He can't so. really whip it on a girl. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, it's got to be tremendously erotic, though, when you get all these women in your room and they're all messing around with each other and they're all fawning all over, over you. Over you, yeah. yeah actually, I, mean, I think he's more interested in seeing the girls make out than he is in actually doing anything with the girls. So he likes to beat off while he's watching the he girls get it on. He get turned on by that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, he and wouldn't they did be the say only guy. something about the, all the girls dance around while the other girl, the yeah, one girl just, is on half. Well, you're just having fun, you know, you're drunk and you're... Let's let's go to Ryan. Ryan, you're on the air. Uh, who gives a shit about this stupid bitch fucking a crusty old man? I don't want to <laughs> fucking hear about it anymore. It's not interesting to you, Ryan. Oh. No, it's not. I'm so sick of this stupid whore. Oh, what? Oh. Wow. Wow. Do that's you get that? Do, <laughs> do you get that a lot from guys like Ryan that like, no. oh, you girls are whores, you just have sex with guys for money, this kind of stuff? No, this is actually my first time. That's oh. quite shocking. <laughs> do uh, Andy, you want to say something from Long Island? Hey now, what's up, brother? Hey Andy, what's I, up? I, I want to ask this prostitute. Did you ever? Did she ever say anything about uh, you having to watch a gay porn? Yeah, she Those said no. Said no gay porn. She said there was yeah. no gay porn. Ah, uh, what you, a prostitute! Hey, Howard, I got a better. Wow, tough there. crowd. You seem real depressed today. I do. No, very I'm very yeah. excited to be here. Are you? You I nervous you a little bit? Yeah. No. You're very no, mellow, it's chick. Very, it's very early. It's it's what like four or five o'clock my time, LA time. So I'm just. So when did you get married after leaving the Playboy Mansion? How long have um, you been away? About a year and a bit after I, I left the mansion. Um, I met Justin at law school. We went to law school together. and. Um, Is he know. able to get it up without Viagra? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, you see, you like having sex with him. He's into you. Right. No. Well, it sounds good. It sounds, uh, it sounds like an interesting life. It's, um, it's sad in a way, I think. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Well, I don't know. You're doing a guy. He's got a financial arrangement. There's no love involved. But it wasn't a financial involved. arrangement, you know? It, it wasn't mm. like that when I met him. When I met him, it was just, he was just a really nice guy, and he was wooing me like any boy would woo a girl. Well, I'll tell you what's sad about it. Then maybe you could relate to this. Okay. You thinking of having a kid someday? Definitely. All right, let's say you have a daughter, mm -hmm. and your daughter says to your mom, I'm moving into the Playboy Mansion. This guy's going to pay me $1,000 a week. And uh, I'm going to sit on his pole for 10 seconds. <laughs> what do you think, Mom? <gasps> now, seriously, you would say, honey, I want a better life for you, right? Of course. Right. But, you know, it wasn't like that when I met Hep. It wasn't like, oh, he's going to pay me $1,000 and I'm going to sit on his pole for 10 seconds. It was like, I like this guy. I was fascinated. And um, I wanted a break from studying and I like, life of discipline. And it seemed like an exciting opportunity and thing to do in life. And it was very much unlike my... Would you recommend it to other women? Let's say there's a young girl listening to this show right now, which probably statistically isn't happening. <laughs> um, but, but let's say there's a young girl listening to it right now. Would you say to her, girls, aspire to sleep with Hefner and get into a financial arrangement with him? 
No, of course I wouldn't say you that. You wouldn't? Of course not. Interesting. Well, having, you know, I mean, in retrospect, I can say a lot of things, but at the time, I feel like I made the right decision, and I, I don't regret it. Did you always I have it in your mind that you would write a book about Hefner? No, I never had in my mind that I would write a book. Why? I wanted to keep that experience as private as possible so because you I come thought forward? I was going to be a lawyer. Because when I left, I was just I was so confused by, you know, living in the real world seems so strange, and <laughs> I kind of needed time to reflect on what happened, and I began writing without the intention of writing a book. Just I, a if Mr. Hefner was here and he could confront you, he would probably say, why did you betray me? I was good to you. I, I, you know, I did the best I could. Uh, you, you knew what you were getting into. Why betray me? I don't think it's a betrayal at all. I think, you know, he's a, definitely a, a fan of the First Amendment, freedom of speech. I don't see why I can't exercise that right and tell my story. Why should he be able to sell this illusion that he has been selling for years, this lifestyle, and, you know, the lifestyle isn't so. I but think wouldn't you be hurt know. if he wrote about you and wrote about your vagina and saying, uh, perhaps described it as being sort of uh, big and loose and <laughs> not that wet? <laughs> well, if that was the truth, but then I guess I'd have to suck it up and go on with life. You but, would. You know. But what, right. what, the point but really is she lived off of that life. You know, the illusion that he creates created this whole industry. And I contributed and to all, that. all of the money that he's able to last lavish on his girlfriends comes from maintaining that illusion so you could be ripping the the you know the food out of the mouths of you know half's girlfriends uh, that's true oh, I don't think hey that's ralph nobody you're on wants the air. them to eat though <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> ralph you're on the air hey now hey you know i i didn't think it was really bad what she said about what went on there and stuff i, mean, I don't either i'm just wondering if hef would think yeah so. he might that's not why like yes I'm, I'm not making yeah, a judgment on isabella i i, I think that uh, isabella uh, was involved in a very unusual situation, and now she's writing about it. But yeah, go it, ahead. Isabel, here's what I'm wondering. It, you know, you said when you – how long were you there? Because you said when you got there it was fun and, you, you know, uh, and the illusion wore off. How, how, how long were you there, and how long did it take for uh, all that to wear off? That's a good question because I speak mm -hmm. to a lot of strippers, like at scores and stuff, and some, some of them love it. And then some of them will say, when I started to be a stripper, it was really fun at first, and right. now I don't like yeah. it anymore. What, what ha when does it wear off? Um – I began dating Hef in January of 2002, and I moved into the mansion four months later. Um, and during those four months, it was still very exciting. When I first moved into the mansion, you know, just the whole mystique of I live at the Playboy Mansion was very exciting. But I think about it, you know, eight months to a year afterwards, it just started because I, I wasn't really intimate with half anymore i wasn't really friends with him there were just always drama with the girls and um and then how long after that did you stay there i stayed another year and you know it was mostly as a result of my relationship with the girls that we became best friends and we were dependent on each other yeah, and, see, the um, only part problem is you stayed at the party too long yeah you got bored that was the thing yeah and you know i think i wrote that in my book if i could go back and change one thing i think i would just live there for a short amount of time like maybe six months and enjoy it and then leave uh manish you're on the air go ahead and kishner ontario Good morning, Howard. Big fan. Thanks, bro. I used to work with Isabella. We worked at a department store in Kitchener. Do you remember that, Isabella? You worked in the toy department? Was it when I was like 16 or something? Yeah, you were going to Resurrection. And yeah, you, when you I was in, in high school. Oh, Zellers. that's so funny, yeah. Yeah, she was a hot piece of ass, Howard. We used to all gather around <laughs> to watch her climb the ladder to get stuff off the Oh, really? Top. Yeah, I bet. Did you start having sex at a young age? Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I wish she was having sex with me. Were you having sex at a young age? Uh, no, I was... 16, almost 17 when I first had sex. I used to whack off thinking of her. She wore songs before they were even popular. We used to call her Dizzy Izzy. Oh, really? my. Did you nice. Know the, did you know the guys were uh, looking at your thong when you would climb no, the ladder? No, I had no idea. Did you know you were Dizzy Izzy? <laughs> No, I didn't, didn't know, that, know that, that either. Well, there you go. Well, let me tell you something, Isabella St. James. Uh, I want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, it's fascinating to hear about this, and um, and best of luck with your book, Bunny Tales, available in stores now. Look for Isabella St. James's book. Thanks, Isabella. Thank you, Howard. So how was the interview? The interview was great. I love Howard, and I love Robin, and everybody was wonderful. Um, some of the colors were a little bit shocking, a little bit harsh, but, you know, I can understand. Maybe if they read the book, they'll change their mind about the situation and uh, understand where I'm coming from. So as predicted, you were, you were pretty revealing in there. I was pretty revealing, but, you know, I didn't cross any personal boundaries, and uh, Howard was very nice and respectful, and so was everybody. I'm surprised Artie didn't make any cracks, but it was great. So, really like, obviously, 
obviously you were pretty willing to talk about Hef because you wrote the book, but was it different actually verbalizing it to someone like Howard versus writing it down in a book? Uh, of course it was, but you know, I was prepared for that and uh, it would be kind of hypocritical of me to write it and not be able to say it. I have to stand behind my work and my words and the truth of the story. Now, is this, do you feel weird now just talking about someone like you, Hefner, that you used to date and now you're like... Howard almost said it was like betrayal, maybe? He asked yeah, I don't feel way. like that at, at all. You know, I was simply telling my story and he happened to be a large part of my story of my life and people want to know the truth and I feel like I'm giving the public what they want to know and let them make up their own minds. But I love him. I really care about him and I, I didn't write this book to betray him. I wrote it for myself and I wrote it for other people to read. So you're glad you stopped down? Glad you visited of course. I'm, I'm honored to be here and I'm very glad I got to meet Howard. He's a sweetheart. Right. I love him. Hopefully you'll stop by again and uh, Hopefully. maybe a Sibian ride next time? <gasps> no. No Sibian rides. Okay. All right. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.